Wait a second. <laughs> He hides the underwear underneath the bed. <laughs> Tonight I am joined by a gentleman whose voice alone will be recognised by everyone as soon as he utters the first syllable. And I am going to do my very, very best this evening to speak slowly um, because Northern Ireland, people from Northern Ireland speak very, very quickly. And um, I I know there's times when this gentleman has no idea what I'm saying. Can you please tell me who you are, where you're from, and what age you are, sir? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> so maybe for ones who already know me and Bongo Racing, I don't have to even tell my name because bonsoir is enough. But... For others and newcomers, Laurent Marine Wailnap from Wailnap Designs from France. I am 40. 44, I guess. Yes, I am. 44. Oh, wow. I don't remember if it's 24 or 44. I never, never remember that. I am 44 and I'm very glad to be here tonight. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I'm going to really insult you now. I thought you were older. Yes, I thought you were an old fart. Everybody, everybody thinks. I thought you were an old fart like me. I really did. Uh, whereabouts in France are you? Uh, I'm almost between Lyon and Grenoble. I was in Lyon many, 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 many years ago, with a little, with a little Baptist church, and I was there for a week, and we were handing out leaflets, and I was only about seventeen or eighteen at the time. It was just a cheap cheap holiday uh, yeah Rebecca yeah she wasn't very <laughs> Rebecca wasn't very churchy um, yeah and anyway we'll not we'll not talk about Rebecca uh, just in case yeah. <laughs> um, it's an open conversation talk about what you want absolutely um, okay so so you're in France and yeah. I, I always wondered what the link up um, I had a bit of a chat with uh, Travis and a little bit with Roger about the the quartet, the, the the four of you, including Leo, and I, I could never understand how you guys got together. You know, guys in America, like loud Americans, and and Laurent, and Travis had the nail of the head, and it was music. And of course, behind me, you see um, some guitars, and I know that uh, you're a very musical gentleman. So tell me about your work, because I, I, we know you as Laurent, the very, very talented head of Wheelnap Designs, who designs our beautiful bongo racing liveries and many, many others. Uh, um, but there's there's more to you than so. So we'll get to Wheelnap. But talk to me about how, how you suppose got to hear from... So with the music thing, we tell tell you about that because you used to be on the road a lot. Yes, I used to be on the road a lot. Absolutely, uh, far from home, away from home for weeks. Uh, back in those years when I was a professional musician. And what sort of music did you play? What what sort of thing is it? I, mean, I don't know how to call it in English because it's it's probably part of the French culture. Okay. You know those parties where you have music bands playing live? Yes. But playing the tunes you can hear on the radio and on TV. Right now, it's more TV than radio. But we were playing the tunes as, uh, you know, we were making covers. Okay. So the idea was to play the tunes as close as possible uh, to the original ones you could hear on the radio the studio versions, sometimes the live versions. But the idea was uh, almost every day, almost, you know, let's be, let, let, let's do that in a realistic way. Five days a week, probably, we were playing everywhere over France, uh, sometimes in Switzerland, sometimes uh, Spain. So you, you didn't have onions around your neck. And you weren't wearing black and white yeah. striped tops. It wasn't this no. stereotype. 
So look, um, you do have, there's a YouTube, there is a long morale, there is a, a YouTube channel that you and some of your mu musician friends got together during that COVID thing that happened. And yes. uh, there, there's a, a, a music, uh, there's a, there was a musical, modern musical, uh, well, it wasn't, what was it, damn it, City of Stars, City of Stars, da, 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 da. It, it was out quite recently there, and there's a band in that. He's a jazz musician. He and she, the the main, he's a, he wants to be a jazz player, and he wants to have his own jazz club. And uh, she's an actor, and it's, it was a famous big movie. But there's a band he goes to play with while he's trying to make it, and the music they play where it was sort of funk. A funk light it was quite light but it was funk and it was great and the music that I've heard you playing it reminds me very much of that it's it's really really good listening music with great guitar work and stuff in it um, so you, if you need to, you need to go and search for Laurel Morale and uh, you, you won't find anything if you type that you have to look for Larry Orange Larry Orange Larry Orange where is the name tell us about that uh, that name, Larry Orange, hmm. because Laurent, Laurent doesn't mean anything for most of the people. And it's almost, you're almost unable to pronounce it. Try it, please. Laurent. No. No. Say it again. So, Say it again. <laughs> Laurent. What? <laughs> that's the reason why. That's exactly the reason why. Say it again. Well, uh, just, well again, again, again. Take Lawrence in yeah. English. Lawrence. Okay, that's, that's it. Lawrence. Lawrence. Remove the S. No, I the can't. S, the S sound, the S sound Lauren. at the end. Remove that. Lauren. Look at you. Look at you. Lauren. That's the reason why. <laughs> Lawrence Lauren. is Larry. Larry okay. is great. Everybody can say that. Larry. Okay. okay. So Larry, it's me in English. Okay. And Orange is, you know, take my, my last name, add an A at the beginning and an O at the end. And it makes orange in Spanish. But you're French. In French? No, you're French. Yes, but... Uh, so you're a Spanish... Yes, but my family comes from Spain, so... You're a Spanish... My name comes orange. from Spain, exactly. You're a Spanish orange. Yes. Yes, no peel with you. Okay. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty complicated, but <laughs> people who know me... Yeah. You know you like it complicated. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, complicated is normal to me. Yes. I yes. just don't know what simple means. No, 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 we do that. We have a sound effect for that very, very thing. Um, is music still a big part of your life? I mean, does, is it, do you pick those guitars up every day still? Yes, it's always been a very big part of my life. But surprisingly, I never played any instrument before the age of 19. And then you went to Vietnam and learned in Vietnam. What? Vietnam. <laughs> you were 19. Um, okay, right. So it wasn't until 19 that you, you... Yes. And at 19, I decided to play. I decided to learn. I decided to play. And it w I went from zero hours a day to eight or nine hours a day. Wow. At the very beginning. And... Guitar. Yeah, guitar and singing. Singing. Vocals. Okay. And... Um, five, four, four years later, I was in a music academy, music school, four degrees, and I passed the exams, and I had the, I had the graduation. Okay, so yeah, yeah, graduation. I like that. Yeah, I had that, and now, and now I am working as a music teacher, guitar teacher. And you have classes most days then? Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays. That's really cool. And, and is, all, is that all ages? I mean, do you have like an old guy like... All ages, in? all forth, like you, young yeah. young, uh, young boys. So the, the youngest is, uh, is uh, five and a half years old. Wow. Yeah, he doesn't want to be there. Yeah, that's a good question. It's not it's not as simple to answer that question. Yeah, um, Can, it looks like because he's five years old and he's more like, yeah, 
what's these lights? Can I touch that? Yeah, I know I've my five year old. I can can't keep her attention for any time whatsoever or any attention span. Um, so, so that's acoustic and electric guitars. Is that that's the thing yeah. you can teach? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a preference? You want a f- funny trivia with yeah. the young, young, young uh, students? Funny trivia, and it works with older ones too. Right behind me, you know, I'm sitting right in front of my students. Yes, it's only it's a uh, individual, you know, it's uh, solo classes. Okay, and um, right behind me, there's a poster of uh, famous guitars. There is one with two necks, you know, the yeah. famous one yeah, from yeah. Uh, Led Zeppelin. This one is in the middle of the of that picture and well i can i use that to know if my students are here or not and when they lose the concentration it's like this and i know exactly what they're watching they're looking at that two neck guitar it's funny trivia that's good teaching it's a, it's, a, it's a tough thing and yeah you know i know people that are excellent at things but they're no good at teaching people um and you'd like apply that to all of aspects of life. I know some of the best sales guys in the world that were brilliant salesmen and they were put into the roles of managers or trainers and they can't, they couldn't hack it. They were better just pay them more money and keep them selling. Uh, there are some people that are good at getting the, the story across and telling it in a certain way. And, you know, and even back in school, you would have had a good teacher and a bad teacher. The teacher that was just, just the facts man. And then the one that would embellish and make it fun and and put some effort on that and I would assume are, are you which one are you are, are you the tough teacher I am the one who cannot keep it simple <laughs> and you know what it serves me a lot it's so useful because basically what you need when you want to learn something the best the best teacher is the one who is able to explain 20 different ways one single thing well, you, you, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Th- this is this is a good talent you have, and you put it to good use with us all the time. Yeah, not everybody likes that. <laughs> In uh, <laughs> not very <laughs> sick. How oh, dear with you? Oh dear. Okay, so um, you have you have some children? Yes, I have one. Well, now what are you just your child children? Thirteen. He's thirteen. Wow, full on, full on thirteen year old. Very good, exciting time of life. Um, I, I usually ask this question about me. Is there uh, is there something else that we don't know about you that we would be really really surprised about? Designer, yes, we'll get to that. M- musician, is there something else that we don't know that would be really surprising? Surprising, yeah. Something I, I'm I'm not sure I could say, but no one will see this. Don't worry. Uh are you a cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> No one, no one does watch the video. <laughs> I'm just glad you have clues on. <laughs> Something surprising. I don't know what he, what is even surprising about well, me. Yeah, just just normal guy. You've no extra party tricks. You normal know. guy, you said no. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you're not a normal guy. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so d- the design part of your life. Yes, I, I can see there's a link with our the artistic musician side. But how did designing sports cars and and the design work? How how did that start? It will be a perfect transition to how I met Leo, Roger, Travis. Okay, it will be a perfect transition. So it starts probably in nineteen ninety two or nineteen nineteen ninety three maybe with a game called IndyCar Racing by Papyrus, by those guys who are today behind iRacing, I think. Okay. I think it's that studio. I'll cut that better. Yeah. And that that game, IndyCar Racing, it was just the next one after the legendary Indy 500. Okay. All PCs, no GPUs, no nothing. Yeah, yeah, of course, Pentium. And there was a little app with the game called Paint Kit. And that yeah. app, allowed you to change the paint deliveries. So it was not powerful. There was not so much possibilities, but I spent way more hours painting cars than driving cars, like exactly like today. 
I, yeah, I, 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 funny, I, I have a friend and he's never came over. He still races, but he's a Forza man and uh, he was excellent with liveries all the way through Forza. Chris Henwood, actually it's his birthday today, uh, Amazon reminded me, um, and he was just a, a designer. He uh, was a chap with a, quite, a, quite a few health difficulties and he was at home a lot and he, he drives a lot, but the designing in the in the uh, livery maker within Forza was his thing. So that that's that same sort of idea. Okay, so... It was that guy on Forza Motorsport. Because okay. the the one who was slower than uh, everybody because he was spending time <laughs> designing for him uh, yeah. and for people because Forza 3, if my memory is good, Forza Motorsports 3 allowed you to share liveries between yes. between, uh, between friends. Yes. That's, that's, uh, was FM3, yeah. Okay, so we see it. So that we've got a, a, a sort of an American game and a design app for liveries. So how then did the link come with Roger then and, and crew? Okay, so trying to go forward very fast. Long story short, they say, um, all through the years from 1992 to, to 2020, Okay. I was making liveries for me on different apps, including console games like Forza and uh, Gran Turismo Sport. And um, in, 19, in 2020, there was the COVID stuff, and I lost my two main music bands I was working with and I was living, making a living with, right? So, okay, so, they, stopped, they stopped touring and stopped working. In, not really the COVID stuff. It's it's a long, very long story. But okay. just to make it, you know, long story short, again, the COVID almost ki- killed a lot of music bands because it's forced people to, uh, to to behave in a way to be pro vaccination or or against, and it happened the same way with music bands at least in France, uh, because, you know, we have a, a particular system to make people make a living easily. You know, when you're a musician, if you if you play enough, there is a system, a social okay. stuff to allow you to, to, to okay. make a decent living, right? But you have to play enough. And if you lose a, a big amount of, of dates... And uh, concerts, because things go wrong with your bands, uh, you got to find something different. So fortunately, I had this opportunity with the music school. And But it, I was not sure that that would be enough. Yeah, I totally. understand. Yeah. And my uh, my wife, Celine, uh, she she told me, what about the, the, the designs you make? You make... Mm, Incredible design on uh, sports cars. Why not trying to to build something from there? And it was like no, no. no. And the day after, as usual, was like, um, what if? Yeah. And uh, and I went to race departments. Maybe you know that. Yes. Really? Yes. And uh, there was a couple of designs. I was like, okay, let's share that and see what happens. And in less than 24 hours, it was downloaded more than uh, 150 times. And he went, Ooh. so I was like, okay, it seems That's to me, it seems to be appreciated a bit. And uh, one thing to next one, a website. And uh, I built that company. And when I decided to gather my clients in a single online event. And that's when I met Roger and Travis and Leo because they all were my clients, basically. And uh, it was, I remember that, it was Zolder, 20 minutes races, uh, time multiplier, <laughs> starting daytime, arrive, uh, we arrive uh, at night and we were probably 15 or 20 drivers. Yeah. Online gaming was there. It was... Uh, you know, everybody appreciated that a lot. And when the event was over, I was like, okay, guys, thank you for coming. Uh, see you next time. And Roger was like, uh, why Why don't we drive again? Um, 
yes. And Leo was like, yeah, 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 let's go. And Chevy's like, well, yeah, you're sure. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, see, I have, and, uh, but was, and he was like, yes, so let's go. And we had uh, four player races. No, not really races, but practice sessions. Yeah, yeah. And we were learning, teaching each other. Here is my tips. I did, yeah, I know how to. Travis was the fastest one in the wet. And I remember uh, uh, an epic session. We were just four, a practice session. Then Vort, totally flooded track. And Travis was the only one able to do a lap, just huh. one lap. See, I, I so the the thing that you had, the common thread that you had in to, that pulled you together was Travis with music production and working with musicians, uh, Roger being in a band and doing bits and pieces back in the early noughties and, and uh, early 90s and the 80s. And Leo was in music, as well, no, uh, but you, Leo, Leo has a very nice voice and he sings good, but he doesn't play no instrument. Okay. Just he was just he was just a young a young man uh, in love with liveries and uh, and we just you know we enjoyed a lot driving together. So next step practice sessions almost every day. And and someday Roger was like, yeah, um, do you mind if I share my liveries with uh, a guy called Robin? He's got a little community. And uh, okay. But I, so, okay. I don't want that without asking before. Okay. Like, yeah, who's that guy? Okay, so that's a starting then. So, um, Sam Racing. So, we, 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 we talk about, a lot of us have that old history with the old games, and this was an indie car race, racing game which had a livery developer. So uh, when then did you it start for real when it got serious and that means uh, wheel and pedals and oh, and stuff like that. Qu- My very first system was a uh, a crappy Thrustmaster back in back in the nineteen nineties with a, a string or I don't know it maybe it was a string feedback <laughs> string okay. Yeah, a lot big elastic band. <laughs> yeah, big elastic feedback. <laughs> yeah, it means no feedback. Yeah. Okay, it just means that when you release the stuff, it yeah, goes back, back to the middle again. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah, yeah, you had that. Yeah, absolutely. Little yeah, cheap that. and so that's my very first uh, wheel, wheel and pedals. So there must have came a point then where it went. I need to get some proper gear. Is that Roger's fault? No, not not me. You maybe. Uh, most of the guys in ball racing, I, I assume, but not me. Me, I I already had a uh, Thrustmaster decent system. Okay, but yes, I must admit that Roger was very eager to talk about very good stuff very yeah. often. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but and at the was... very beginning, he was yeah. like. Yeah, look, yeah, you seem not to be very precise when you're braking, but what is your pedals? Let me know what is your pedals. What pedals <laughs> do you help you? Oh, that's no good. That's no good. You know what you need? Let me send you a link. <laughs> <laughs> just, and immediately, I, 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 my inbox from him is just full of links. To, yeah. Did you see this? These, you immediately these. have all you need to get the stuff purchased in your mailbox the day after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, from that, I mean, from rigs to Mirandas gloves to, to semi Q and I, 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 I got to say, the the semi cube stuff was a good shite. The high the GSI wheel, good shite. Yeah, I, 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 it's it's funny that Roger is the the salesman in terms of stuff. It's funny, but he's very, you know, he knows what he's talking about really well. So you can trust him if you need to buy or, you know, change your stuff because he's really interested and he's got very good, very good device. And I think it's, he's not the kind of guy who, who, who purchases anything just because the logo is nice, you know? Yeah. No, no. He, he He's a researcher. I think he researches and reads a lot and, and learns a lot and he soaks that in and he, he has that sort of analytical mind that can go yeah that's that that's that and that, that's the right one to get and yeah he I, I, I don't think he is the sort of guy that would be um, 
He'll he'll not just go out and buy a Ferrari today. He'll go out and, and examine which car he should get exactly, but he'll buy the right one first time. He will buy a Porsche. Yeah, of course, of course there'll be a Porsche and there will be a Ferrari. Never, ever, ever, ever. Okay, um, so that that's, that's you've got, you have a rig there now, um, and you started with that. So what what kind of kit are you using now? What, what have you ended up with? What are you driving with now? Okay, now it's full Mozart racing stuff. R9, wheelbase is R9, pedals, uh, SRP. Um, the wheel itself is that. Uh, GS. Yep. And um, I have the dash, the little dashboard, the Moza stuff. Lovely. Very happy with the Moza? Yes, I'm very happy with Moza. You know, when I when I when I see that here and there people are having fana crap system dying one after the other one, man. You know, it started with you and then Trav, Leo, bye bye. We never saw him again. Too bad. Yeah. Uh, Not- uh I don't wanna be I don't wanna do any counter advising advertisement advertisement. <laughs> Yeah, when I take, but what do you know? You know, members don't all really like. Yeah, you know, and lots of there's lots of people have Fanatec stuff, and they have no issues with it whatsoever. And long may it continue that they have no issues with their Fanatec kit. Uh, but but when you do, um, be prepared for a wait. Uh, and I I could for now, um, this is my business, and I could not, I could not. Trust a Fanatec product at this moment yeah. in time for my business. So and I, and I, and I, I can understand you a hundred percent for uh, you. Know, you had to go back to uh, an old Logitech stuff. Very reliable. Yeah, yeah, it works. It's still going, and it's not going away. It's sitting on the floor beside me, just in case. Yeah. Exactly, just in case. Uh, it's a spare part, spare sparing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, so, um, how would you describe how Laurel, Laurel, Laurel? Oh, no, yes. If you like Roger, he says Laurent. It's great. It sounds so not French. Okay. <laughs> Laurent. Hey, Laurent. Uh, how would you describe your driving style? And I'll tell you what I thought think of your driving style on when I first met you. So, what do you that's think the, of your driving that's style? That's very exciting. Uh, I think my driving style is mostly based on defense. Yeah, I, I, you're not a very aggressive driver. I'm oh, I'm exactly the opposite of an aggressive driver. I'm even unable to be aggressive when I need to. For example, in a quality situation, I'm probably one of the slowest qualifiers because I'm, you know, for me, it's just, okay, is that the right line? And... All the, the mates, Roger say, Roger told me, Travis told me, Leo told me, everybody told me, just why don't you try to go deeper, you know? Don't be afraid of any track cut. It's just quality. I'm like, okay, but probably it's stronger than me. I'm, I don't want to cut. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep it clean. Clean and tidy. Uh, yeah, so look at that. I mean, I remember that those first couple of times that we drove together, I have to admit, at that stage, I thought you were you were uh, and Roger and Travis were gods. Uh, I just could not understand and and Leo, who drove quite a lot with us at the very beginning, um, how you went so so fast. I, I just it did not it just could not compute in my head how you could do the things that you did, and it. Uh, and it's exper- that was ex- it's experience now, um, uh, but the ta- your raw talent that you've shown, and, and you're a very very calm driver, um, uh, yeah, steady, steady, st- steady, calm, uh, reliable, uh, trustworthy. If I'm beside you, I know you're not going to put me in a ditch, um. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 I very much approve of of the Lorem uh, driving style. It's um, 
Yeah, that's very good. Thank you. I'm honored. But but honestly, at the beginning, I was God, because when there was my, or myself and there was Ian and Andy at the time, uh, and uh, then Davy Mack and Stevie Hughes all sort of joined in, and we just just we couldn't. We you were on a different level completely and utterly. Um, and thankfully, the learnings that we've taken from you now, that, that gap is an awful lot closer now. And um, it's great that we're competing closer together now. You're, so. you're clearly faster than me now. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, you do, because... And there's a reason. And, you know, I am still designing a lot, and you are driving more. <laughs> yeah. Way more than me now. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, I was looking at the stats today of how many laps I had done in the uh, BMW, the M4, and I think it was something like two and a half thousand laps in the BMW. Uh, and you know me, I stick with the car. It's only just recently, I've just literally over the last week, I've jumped into a Ferrari longer. But by by a long shot, the BMW is the, the car that I've driven the most. So I, I think I've given it a fair shot. And it's time to move on. Uh, so yes, uh, since November, my my R's in the cockpit have definitely went went up an awful lot. I mean, there are six R's today, um, a few R's last night. We'll have a few R's tomorrow evening. I'll have six R's on Friday. Um, it you know, sounds like it's a dream coming true, and you really look like you're ten years old. <laughs> I get times, and I can't, and I get on like I'm ten years old as well. At times, I, I, I have fun with it. I do have fun with it. Um, do you have a favorite car? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Do you have time? Yeah, you can. I don't have one favorite car. I have okay. dozens of favorite cars. Okay. Well, 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 well. In real life, maybe in real life that would be interesting. No, no, I don't care. Real life, I don't have enough money to be fan of any real car. Okay. Then, and and this was ACC that where we we talk about really. So um, yeah, the problem is that I've been I've been playing sim racing games since too long to mm. be limited to only ACC. Okay. So I must okay. talk about Lotus because, and the TDR cars because okay, sensation sensations of uh, it's very brutal and raw when Ooh, you drive it. This is exhausting. Okay, right. And the, the Speed Twelve TVR is probably more one of the most incredible cars I ever drove in a race sim. See, for me, now that you've said that, I mean, the only there's one car immediately jumps to mind to me, which is the Ford GT40. And yeah. the sound and the raw grunt of it and the rawness of it. That I think that was one of my favorite ever cars and back in Forza days and just just love that. Well, not the best to handle, but just a fabulous car to drive. Um yeah. but at the moment you're driving Lambo. Yes. And I was speaking to Zach just recently in one when we had a chat. And he tried the Lambo is very, very particular. It's very special. It's probably alone in its class. And I'm not talking about GT3 or whatever. It's just the most understeery one. So, okay. This is understeer. Okay. Understeer. So understeer you, you're pushing you always from the front. Feel like, you always feel like you're not steering enough all the time. Except if your braking skills are very... You know, if you work the braking skills, that car is more demanding than anyone about the braking. <laughs> it's very simple to accelerate. There is almost no situation when you accelerate too much and you lose the rear end, you know. But the braking, it's a freaking science with that one. So I haven't spent much of any time in the Lambo whatsoever. And Zach didn't get on with it, but you're obviously getting on with it. So... um and before the Lambo, what was your main poison? What was your main? The Audi. The, oh, yeah, the furry dice car. Yes. Yeah. The Audi. And before the Audi was the BMW. Yeah. Yeah, the OP cars. So, again, you're, those were very popular cars. Very, very, they were the, the, the meta cars. The, the Audi, very, very fast. The acceleration, always fast. Off the line, uh, the BMW was was top dog for a long time, but you've taken a step away from that because the Lambo is not seen as one of those meta, super fast cars that no. uh, there's a but bit more no. skill to it. I, basically, in video games, I love 
doing great things with crappy stuff. <laughs> I love that. Use a crappy thing and do something great and people are like, wow. If you take a no P stuff and you do something good, it's just expected. Yeah. I hate being expected. Hmm. See, well, I've discovered Ferrari and I haven't delivered the, I haven't, I've stayed away from the Ferrari because everybody was driving the Ferrari and because it was OP, but it's not now. Um, and I've just found it is a really solid platform. I can feel the car and it feels good to me, not to everybody, but good to me immediately. And, uh, I'm still learning an awful lot about it, but, uh, just in the, in the two weeks that I've been driving it. At six twelve, eighty, the twenty four hours that I've driven it solid, um, uh, I, I've re really, really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm able to throw it around, and and it isn't trying to kill me all the time. Still love the mm -hmm. Porsche. I love the Porsche still. I still, and again, I mean, it's a, that's an acquired taste. The BMW, I'm bored with. I am so bored with the BMW. Um, I think it's it's you know, it's quiet and. There's not a lot of it, it is. person. There's not a lot of personality with it. I love. It is a bit tasteless. Yeah, I, I love the Aston Martin. It's it was a it's a fantastic car. The big AMG had a lot of personality with it as well. Um, and then there's some of the other cars coming back. I mean, the Audi's coming back. The Nissan's coming back. It's it's nice. The Bentley was what I started with. Uh, yes, yeah. I think a lot of people started with it. Maybe from the UK. In the UK, in UK, yes. Yeah. Sit on the right. I yeah. feel like feeling like you're at home. Yeah. <laughs> Driving on the correct side of the road. Um, okay, so yeah, well, are you, well, you're going to stick with it for a while. You, you touched on it a little bit before about how you came across me. And again, yeah. this, this this name keeps on coming up. This Roger asked you, could you, he share a livery? And then that's how you, you came along with Roger to some of our little server nights. Um and that's a bit like what you said. It was like practice nights with practice races and before this all really kicked off. I mean, there was no real structure. There was no there was no events. There was no series. You know, it was just little races on a Thursday night or pretty much any night of the week, really. There wasn't anything planned. Um, and you, you, just, you just appeared and it was cool. So has it been? I think you will. I, will, I think you will have to say it again. Because I'm not sure exactly uh, to understand the question. Okay. It wasn't really a question. I, I suppose it was more, you came along with Roger. Yes. And you joined the server for with me for the first time. And it was casual race nights. There was no championship. There was nothing organized. It was just get together most nights and we pick a track and we away away we went. Um, was and get out. Yeah, we were hanging out. Yeah, and I was that was really good. And that's this is kind of how this whole community just started. So like-minded people that like racing and going fast and learning, and uh, that's how the community started. How, has mm -hmm. has Bongo Racing been good for you? Is it is it a good place to be for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. You just have to be a clean driver. Because if you know a clean driver, you won't last so much in that community. Because someday, sooner or late, but maybe sooner, a guy will have a problem with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, we, are, we are quite you protective. Have to be or, 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 we are you protective. You have to be major, but you have to be a kid. Yes. So that's deeply, probably the difficult point. Because you have to be a man, but you have to be a kid. And you have to be clean. You have to be... Uh, a, a sportsman, uh, a gentleman. You have to be concerned with what other people feel like. You have to be able to teach a bit because some, someone will sooner or later ask you a hint. Can you help me? Sure, I can. So that's probably what it takes to be part of that community, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, and yes, I'm very happy to be part of it. Yeah. When, when we get the, when new people come on board, the racing styles that they've been used to in the past 
are generally an awful lot more aggressive and, you know, yeah, yeah, frig you, bugger off, I don't care, you know, crash, I don't care. But we, we, there, there has to be part of you that has to be able to analyze what people are telling you, like that's too aggressive or that's, you shouldn't be doing that or uh, as, as the Roger goes, ah, ah, ah no, you don't. Um, yeah, the, you know, I'm skipping up the inside. Ah, ah, ah. Um, you have to be able to go. Hold, on, hold on. I am actually doing something wrong here. I can do it better, and you can learn. And if you and, and if you have that mindset, you'll do really, really, really well with us, and you'll have a better time as well. Um, because if you want that sort of aggressive, I don't give a toss. Uh, you might as well just go to random, random lobbies, and uh, do it that way because that's not what this is about. Um, I mean, over the last <clears throat> six or eight months, we have worked an awful lot closer together, and you've designed all of the Bongo Racing liveries from the, the my first initial one to all of the Series 1 Bongo Racing for uh, Warriors and Series 2. You've done the, the extra Lambo. You've done some specials for Roger and I for the fantastic, successful event at Silverstone, which keeps on the cropping up and it can never get away. Um, what was your comment in the video? Uh Laurel says, uh, is it you mightn't just be last? <laughs> Something I don't know what it was. That, that really... no, it was at least there will be someone behind you. <laughs> yes. God. Or something like this. Don't, you know, you know keep calm, Robin. There will be mm. probably someone you will beat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. yes, I think I blew you up with a nuclear explosion in the video at that point. Um, and there will be more of that. And I know... Uh, your services are offered out to our community. You are supporting the Warrior Season 1. You support its Warrior Season 2. It's lovely. Every stream that I have, the Wheel Nap logo is on it. I pretty much talk about Wheel Nap all the time. I just love the designs that you do. But um, as as the community have now started to go to you to get their own base liveries, liveries made, that is something you're very happy to do and they can contact you through our Discord or go to wheelnapdesigns.com and and find, see your portfolio, the liveries that you have. There's a blog there too. It's really, really cool service that you have. And everybody that I've spoken to that has worked with you to get a design done, just they've been over the moon at how attentive you've been and there's a brief and it's, it's hard. I mean, and I remember when we had those conversations, like, well, what do you want? And I'm going, well, I want a, a serious-looking racing car, but it has to be really, really, from a distance, it has to look like a serious racing car. But when you get up close, it has to have Viagra and Brill and Cream and Specsavers and all over 50s products on it. But from a distance, it has to look really, really cool. And mm -hmm. uh, it has to have that bongo green, which was always there. And I just I'm over the moon. And series one was was the, the cars were were really cool. Series two, the I'm looking at it now. The Aston Martin that you put together for me, my BMW, just they just look so good compared to other cars in the track. It's just awesome. It's just class. And I'll continue to that for the next season. There'll be a new set of bongo liveries done for for the all the most popular cars as well. And we'll continue to do that. So how does that process work? When you get somebody that wants a design, how how does that how does that process work, Laurent? That's pretty simple for us. Oh, because if you want something very affordable, it depends on of course it depends on uh, the budget because there is basically two different ways to work on it. I can take a model I already have done, multi layer file and change the colors, you know, the sponsors. Yes. Driver name, of course, ID elements. And so going from a WD livery to your livery based on this one, it's one of the, the my affordable services. So it's fast, you know, you can have your own livery within 24 hours or, or 48. Yes. You know? Uh, or maybe three or four days, but it's never more than this. So that's the affordable service. And if you if you want to if you want to go with something very unique, now we can develop a unique livery together, which is probably what we will do. 
And that's pretty, it's a different, different story. We start from a blank sheet. We're having a, we're having a vocal, a meeting. You talk about what you envision or you don't, or you would like to envision what is possible. I like, you know, for example, one of the latest projects was with a very nice guy in the community, Mr. Tomlinson. Yes. He he's from Cornwall and he wanted his car to be themed with the UFR, the football and rugby club of Cornwall. So he sent me pics. We had a vocal. We talked about it. He wanted some stripes, but not too much. He wanted it black, but not just black, not too black. Okay. He wanted it yellow, but yeah, but I, he still wanted a, a white cross on it. So it was a bit messy. I was yeah. like, okay, I took some notes. I'll be back with a draft. And then we had a, a, a new meeting and we took a look at that draft together. It was like, oh, I love this. That, but that I love. Okay. So I took notes once again. And step two, it's a, a pre-final version of it. And he was super happy with it. So we had just a couple of modifications to put. And now he's having his unique livery. Nobody looks like. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. It is, and he's, he's super very happy. And that's great. And I think Jason said one of the most memorable times, one of the things that he remembers the most, and one of his, the most proud moments in racing is coming for the first time onto the track in his new Bentley livery. And he was that's one of his memories that, that he just loves. And uh, it is a great feeling to go out there having something unique in class yourself. So that's 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 brilliant. And and look so uh you know I'm not gonna do yeah you know, it's not a full blown advert big thing going on here, but you're very, very approachable. Contact you through Discord or through wheelnapdesigns.com and, and you'll you'll help people out. And I just you, you just have. For people that are starting out in sim racing, would you give what what advice would you give them? So now in modern day sim racing, whether it be <coughs> i racing or ACC or Le Mans twenty four or something like that. I mean, what what, what or what, as far as I don't know, is it uh, is it a question? Is it what? It's a hard question. It's, hard... it's really not simple to answer that because it depends on. Tons of parameters. Do you love a GT3? Are you a GT3 man? So go with ACC if you don't mind driving the same car again and again. If you want tons of different cars, maybe try AC1, AC the old one, and put some mods on it. If you love uh, open wheels, go playing iRacing if you have enough money. You know, the problem is that iRacing is very expensive if you want a full experience. But we're not here to talk yeah, about. Yeah. And uh, Le Mans Ultimate is very, very, um, you know, I, I have a lot of big expectations with that one, but it's not finished. Not quite right yet, yeah. And the other one I would talk about for a guy who is not necessarily very, a social, not very a social guy, AMS2 is very, very interesting. It's a beautiful because thing. you can have a full, a full, decent, solid experience uh, in single player. Yes, the AI is good enough. Is uh, the AI's skill level is impressive, and uh, and and the game itself is very well balanced. You have a lots of Classes, lots of, lots of different cars. It's very... I haven't played a lot, yeah. but when I've been in it with the guys, we've had lots of fun in it. Okay. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. From go-karts right through to all my... <laughs> yeah, go -kart that night. Go -kart night. <laughs> Speaking of that, do you have any memorable moments over the last couple of years from your... or, or at all from your uh, time sim racing? Is there something that... whether it's in the last year or further back, is there something, some night that there's something that happened or... Some something doesn't have to mean the mean a race, but you know, is there maybe it could be something social? Uh, is it, no, maybe a very good memory is when Roger and I went on the track for the very first time with the SKR livery we've been developing together. Mm -hmm. 
it was at um, that race was at Watkins Glen. We were P P two and P three. Oh yeah, I kind of remember. And we had a, a, you know, he was in front of me. We were very close. He lost the rear end. We touched. He went into the wall. Race over, and I had some damage. And I had I was out of fuel, so little damaged, and I ne- I needed to go to box to put some fuel and repair, and I was. Maybe I finished P8 or P9 or something, but not very impressive result. But yeah, well, again, I'll never, I'll never get away from Silverstone. Just never, ever, ever, ever. Um, sim racing has developed so much over the last two or three years. Mm. Where do you see it going as a on a social side and a hardware side? Hardware, uh, I think it's the end of. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. It's the end of Fanatec. I'm sorry for that. Okay. Because the customer service is definitely way weaker than expected. It's one of the biggest companies. It's one of the, you know, they are they are partner with the most important GT championship. Yes. And it's ridiculous. The customer service... It's bound to be it's having ridiculous. a. It's bound to be having some sort of effect on their on their their bottom line somewhere. The seals have to be affected in some way. And it just it provides uh, some fame to all the to all the manufacturers of uh, in terms of equipment. So as much uh, the more Fanatec is ridiculous, the more the other. Uh, you just have to do it right. Companies. Rise up, yeah, and and that's very good because it was fanatic versus the rest of the world, and the rest of the world was what uh-huh. first master and Logitech, yeah, yeah, ha, <laughs> have fun. Okay, so it was that, and now you have Moza, you have SimuQ, you have SimMagic, you have Isotech, you have okay. So I don't need a full list, but in terms of equipment, it's just. It will be better and better. In terms of software, uh, that's a very interesting question because um, development studios uh, used to to make, I, I think, wrong choices because the the reference was the esport players. And that's not where the money lies. No, it's with old fellows like us. Yes, and and um, basically, if you if you listen to any sport player and talk about the physics, for example, he will talk about some problems you and I and nobody will experience. Will never experience that. Yeah, they will never talk about the rain simulation, the the. Um, day and night cycle it they won't talk about that because basically esport uh events are you know it's dry and it's 2 p.m it's dry and it's 2 p.m and that's all they can talk about the physics when it's dry and it's 2 p.m is uh it's no good because of this and that i don't care we'll never i will never feel that on my end because i'm no alien yeah exactly but i love when the damage is very realistic, which they don't care about. I love when the nighttime is feels really realistic. They don't care about. I love when the weather can go from dry to wet and how it feels on the track. They don't care about. I do care about. You do care about. Roger cares about. And who's got money? Mm, not me. I'm retired. I <laughs> know me. <laughs> uh, now, yeah, I mean, what I'm saying. Yeah, so, I mean, where we started, if we think about, about where our first races started in Bongo Racing uh, and in, in Series 1, it was generally, most of it was was kind of vanilla, kind of, you know, we were trying to ease people in, didn't want to drop too many really difficult things at it. This season, the length of the races have went up. There's more and more moist Involved, there's more and more dark. Like tomorrow, this, where are we now? This today is Friday, tomorrow is Friday, Thursday. So on Friday, Thursday night, tomorrow evening, 
we are doing a 90 minute race at Brands Hatch in mixed conditions and that that would have freaked the majority of us out and now there's a good bulk of us with confidence enough to take that on and that confidence then trickles down to the new guys to say hey this isn't so bad you you can do it uh, yeah, so it's not we just we just haven't dropped everybody in the deep end and and for me that is really important that we we slowly gently ramp that difficulty up for the guys that want that challenge and I love the challenge of the the wet and nighttime and all of that stuff and season three will will ramp it up another level again to the Warriors that sort of premium uh, championship uh, there's a new championship about to start very very soon hope you read the document it's called uh, the Bongo World Series we'll be talking about it in depth uh, very very soon and it's going to have something very very interesting for brand new drivers so brand new drivers will be very, very easy to enter. Um, very, they'll not, they'll not be anything too crazy for you guys. Short races, but then there'll be uh, two two races on an evening. And in the second race, the guys that did really well in the first race, we get a lollipop. It's going to there. It's going to be difficult for them in the second race. So we'll, we'll go into details of that's going to be very exciting. The Bongo World Series. It'll start off with best British. Then we go on to uh, um, uh, into Europe, and then we go on out to Asia and the rest of the world. And that's we'll be talking about that a lot very, very soon. One final thing as we start to wrap this up. Next, on the 1st of April, just next week, that's Monday. Oh, that's next Monday. The Green Hell, Nordisch Life, lands on ACC. Uh, is that something you're looking forward to? I always hated that track as much as I love it. Because I love the fact when when you cross the the start line, yes, don't do any mistake, <laughs> don't make mistake, don't do any scratch. Yeah, that <laughs> may because wait, what was it? When you did a qualifying lap, so you go out and you do your siding lap and you start yeah. your qualifying lap and you and, and you have one lap. You scrub it. The quali the quali is ten minutes. You have one. Lap. Yeah, you scrub it. There's going to be a lot of dirty laps in here at the beginning. And I know, see, in a couple of weeks' time, there's going to be guys setting times there which are going to be godlike. There's guys that are going to know that place. Yeah, that's always going to be the case. But I think most of the sim racers know that place very well. Yeah. Take any any game, take AC, take AMS2, take uh, any game, any Forza. We know most of the left so. rights. Yeah. You know, I think it's a track most of us have driven on 10, 12, 100, 1,000 laps, yeah, yeah. not 1,000, but 100 laps. We we all made tons of laps on that track, and we all know it. We we all know where it goes. Is it a left corner or a right corner after this one? We know that. But yeah, but the it's... ACC model, it may be a different story. Do you say, yeah, because well, the physics and the high curbs and everything, it's going to be very interesting how the setups are. Again, the setups will come automatically there. Uh, it's going to be very interesting if they if they remap the GP circuit as well. Uh, uh, they'll think that hopefully that will happen too. So uh, Nuremberg Ring will be uh, remapped and then with the Nordish Life. It's going to be very interesting doing a six lap race there. That's or a four lap race or whatever it may be. That's going to be. Ticket seven is one hour, like more or less. Mark Healy said recently, seven laps. It's a hour. Yeah. So we uh, probably eight laps will be the soixante uh, oh, oh. waiting for me. <laughs> so so no, um, yeah. But, but the the challenge with it will would be if you have twenty five or thirty drivers there and there's a few accidents. There's a, there's going to be a chance. Of, it's going to be a lone, lot of lonely drivers out there. To be able to stay that close to people for that length of time is uh, that's going to be tough. It will be the opportunity for us to remember AIDS words when it's yellow. Lift a bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on that point, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't, Lauren? Is there anything you were expecting me to ask you that I didn't? I'm not going to ask you about what you Googled last. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to ask you what your favorite cheese is or or do you have onions? Cheese is. Cheese is. Cheese is. I'm French, so it's not one cheese. It's a lot of cheeses. I love. Yeah. 
I got a bit of Point Levesque in there. And you'll be fine. How could you know Point Levesque, especially? Uh, I, it's, uh, not what, it's not one of the most famous here. But it's a very nice cheese, isn't it? It would be a, is a premium, no? Yeah, it's good. Well, over here, mate, okay. So I went out with a girl many years ago whose mother and father were very well-to-do. They went to play and, you know, uh, he, he drove a beautiful Toyota Supra. And Supra? Supra. Wow. Yeah, and they had a plane, and they had horse and horses and Ooh. race horses. Yeah. And but uh, they would, uh, yeah, they had Point Levesque and port and after dinner, and uh, yeah, it was just uh, or, or they would have had point, the one Point Levesque. I always remember it because it was so friggin' smelly, um, but really, yes, really, it is really, really tasty. Um, anyway, anyway, okay, look, I'm going to wrap this up, Laurent. This has been brilliant. I, I've loved this. Uh, really, really interesting to have a chat with you. It's been lovely, and I'm sure people are going to love this. Uh, and I love working with you. I love you being part of this community. Um, I, I find a friend uh, in Laurent. Um, I, I can say that now, and uh, it is. It's been fantastic. It's been. It's uh, been a, a a brilliant part of my life that has opened up now, and I can't wait to meet in person. I really can't. Oh uh, yeah, there will be an opportunity, maybe not uh, not the ADAC because it's a tiny bit too yeah. much. Okay. But uh, there will be work out. there will work be out. opportunities. Me and my and my wife really really want to visit UK someday. Okay. Well, I'm only a hop and a skip and a jump away from there. And I know that you sometimes go to Italy. Yes, I'm going to Italy again in August. I go in Italy. Yes. My niece. But my don't take your car. I take your plane. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I was going to start walking now. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> no, my niece. You, you, you should maybe stop now because if you want to go to Italy, it will take a uh, a couple of days. No, uh, we are Garda, Lake Garda. With, with, um, so my is one of our favorite spots around uh, that part of the world. And one of my nieces, who's always went with us on our holidays, she's getting married and she's going to get her um, wedding is in uh, around Lake Garda, place called Malchesney in the castle there. So. That's in August, so we're over there, but we're going to turn it into a holiday as well. But And uh, last year when I was over, I, I, I took in Monza, and I went yes, nice, I remember that. and you sat on that beautiful banking. Uh, uh, but this time, I think I'm going to make the effort and try to take a skip up to Maranello, Maranello and visit Ferrari. I, so I think I'm going to try and... Especially if you, if you become one of the no. ambassadors... No, 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 I'm not going to, no, no, definitely, no, I'm not going to be a one-trick pony, no, I definitely, as far as the Ferrari's concerned, I won't be a one-trick pony, it's great right now, uh, and it'll serve, it's a tool at the moment, I don't have passion for it, it, um, it but it's a very comfortable tool, so, uh, I'll, and I'll use it until then, but yes, I, I won't all, I'm not going to be uh, uh, Rogers only in a Porsche, and Mark Healy is only in a Ferrari, and Matthew Bird is only in a Ferrari, I, I don't, no, I I like to taste the flavors of different things. Here, I, I know the feeling. Okay, Laura, bugger off, and I'll see you on track very, very soon. Yes, uh, thank you, Robin. It was great. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, man, that was good. I enjoyed that. That? That's good. Cool. Yeah, I'm done. That was good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> It was. I was a tiny bit uh, stressed. It shouldn't be. Yeah, right. but I was. Oh, well, you're fine. You're fine. Here, I gotta go. Uh, I said Judith will be an R, so we're a bit it, more. Than it, was, it was very. Was very. I was honored that you you wanted to have that chat with me. Thank you, Laurent. You you were with me from almost the very very beginning. You were the, the part of that that five or six of us that all started together, and I wouldn't be here today doing what I'm doing if it hadn't have been for that mighty six um, you know that Ead and yourself and Roger and Travis for entertainment um, and um, Steve and Dave you know the, 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 that real uh, and Jason the, the really tight knit knit group and Matthew even though Matthew doesn't race with us that often but Matthew and I met through LFM and 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 that was wow! This is happening, and and Matthew's been sort of on the outside, going, "Holy shit! This is this has got out of hand," and it and it's great. It's pretty lovely to be. It's great to be part of it. Anyway, I gotta go. Gotta go. Have a good night. Are you racing with us tomorrow night? 
tomorrow. No, I'm not sure. I'm not yet sure. Okay. Be available, but right. if if I come, it will be a surprise. Great. All right. I'm right here. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Then he waddled away.